Most people who want to change their lives can't. And they ask themselves, why? Why can't it change? Why can't I stop suffering? Why does it seem that in my relationships I suffer so much? In my professional life, I'm not successful. I'm always frustrated, feeling unhappy with who I am, with what I have, and I want to change. I make plans, lists. Every year, I set new objectives for the following year. And I decide that everything will be different from now on, but everything gets worse than before. Why can't I change? Is the question of many. A true answer that meets many in this situation is the following. Remorse does not produce change. Only repentance produces change. Many people feel remorse. What many feel when they are unhappy with their lives is a feeling of remorse for what they are going through. They feel remorse means a feeling of regret, of sadness, but not enough to pay the price for a change. Repentance is not a feeling. Repentance includes a feeling of sadness, but goes beyond sadness. It goes beyond the feeling of sadness, sorrow and frustration. It is a decision to sever the flesh, to change course and abandon what caused their suffering. So repentance is completely different from remorse, just as water is different from oil. And people mistake the two things. Remorse, for example, is a person who sits at the table to eat, and in the morning they put on their clothes, but the trousers didn't close properly, and they think, it's been a while that they think, I have to lose weight, I will lose weight, I will. Then they sit at the table, in the time of a meal, then they eat more than they should and feel remorse. What is the remorse? I've eaten too much. I shouldn't have eaten all that. I shouldn't have eaten that cake, that meat, that potato. I shouldn't. But soon it goes away. At the next meal, they repeat the same behavior. This is remorse. Repentance is you making a decision that affects what you buy in the supermarket. I will no longer buy this or that. This will no longer exist in my house, this kind of food. I will exchange this food for that one. This is repentance. This is a change, a change of mind, of behavior. It's to pay the price, it's to sit at the table and to see a food that you are not used to because you like the other kind of food. You may say, I don't like this, I'll feel hungry after. But repentance makes you think, this is the best for you. You won't like it now, but later you will. Eat it. This is what repentance does, is a change of mind. It's a change in your inside that causes a change on the outside. So because many don't have repentance towards their actions, reactions and behaviors, their lives don't change and you will never change. Your marriage will never change if you don't repent from the things you've done or you are doing that harms your marriage. Your financial life will never change if you do not repent from the habits that destroy your financial condition. 
habits that leads you to buy impulsively with a credit card because of anxiety, a habit to buy because of a feeling just for you to feel better, for you to feel better with yourself, giving gifts to win their friendship or their admiration. As long as you don't repent from these things, your financial life will not improve. As long as you don't change your inside, the way you look at yourself, your ability to work, to create wealth, as long as you don't change the way you see your job, then maybe you go there every morning to work by force. You go there by force. You go there angry with your boss, the employees, your colleagues at work, angry at the public transport, angry at the salary you receive. You go there angry instead of you putting your heart into what you do or leaving this job and going to another one. You keep on speaking ill about your financial life. How will you prosper if you curse your own work if you curse the company that pay for your salary, how will you change your finances like this? So your life change only comes through repentance. That's why when the Lord Jesus was here, he spoke several times and he was not the only one about repentance. Even saying, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I have come to call the sinners to repentance. In other words, those who recognize their mistakes, their flaws, those who recognize their sick condition. Because you also said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. So Jesus came to call those who recognize that they are sick. I am sick and I need help. I need a medication. I need the healing. I need the treatment. So when you recognize this and look for help, only then you will receive the help that you need. Then you will make better decisions. You will change the course of your life. At first, you will be uncomfortable because you are used to what you do that is wrong. And it's interesting that we get used with evil. There are couples who get used with fighting. There are children who get used to fight with their parents and parents with their children. There are some who get used with misery, others to addictions. We get used to evil. This is evil and a fact about the human reality. So when you want to change, you will have to make peace with the new, with what is uncomfortable, with what takes you out from your comfort zone. You will be days, months that will be hard because you will have to adapt to this new routine, new behaviors, new friendships, because you sever the ties with people who are not good to you, things that will lead you to come out of your daily life. So you will be a hard moment of tradition, but soon you will get used with a new reality, a reality of doing good, of what is right. And then you will change the seed that you've been planting. And in due time, be patient. Don't forget the time of the promise. In due time, you start to reap the fruits of these new seeds that you are planting. So don't forget, if you've been trying to change life and you're not being able to, most probably it's because you want to change without repenting. And there's no change without repentance with everything in life and also with God. To change someone's life, God demands that person to repent. If they repent, he's ready to change them, to hold their hands and walk with them towards a new direction. But as long as they 
remain proud, pretending that they have changed, that they want to change, so God will leave them alone to reap the fruits of this deceit. There will be more of the same that you've been living in. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.